Tuesday again. Time for tips and tricks for teachers. We've been talking about how to create character. We've been talking about plot and setting. Today we're going to talk about beginnings and endings because you want your story to start in a way that grabs the attention of the reader and wants to keep them wants them to keep reading. You want them to keep reading. You also want endings that sort of wrap everything up. There's a great book from Time for Kids, published in 2006, called Ready, Set, Write, a Writer's Handbook. And it's very user-friendly. And if you look and see uh, this example here, you can see there's lots of colors, not a lot of text, very easy to follow as a resource for you as a teacher. And in this example, is the beginning strong? You see how a weak beginning is very different than a strong beginning. A weak beginning, it snowed last night, or a strong beginning, when I looked out the window, I knew that this would be a great day. So you again, you want your opening to reach out and grab the reader and make them want to continue. Here are some examples. Begin with a question. Have you ever wondered how snowflakes form? Begin with a quotation. That's just about the weirdest thing I've ever seen, Rick cried. Begin with a description. Three tiny balls of fur nuzzled against my cat, Franny. If you look at this other, this next example from Writing the Hook by Gay Miller, teaching students to write a narrative, strategies for writing a story beginning, you can see that five different ways of starting are outlined here. You can start with onomatopoeia. Again, that's when you start with a sound that sounds like the word buzz. You can start with an interesting fact. You can start with a vivid description, and that's a place where you can use simile that uses like or as or metaphor when you compare one thing to something else. You can start with a question, or you can start with dialogue. So if you go to this resource by Gay Miller, you can find lots of tips for your own story starters and good beginnings. She also says, shows this example here, Great first lines in children's literature. Marley was dead to begin with, from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Where's Papa going with that axe, said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast, from Charlotte's Web. The Herdmans were absolutely the worst kids in the history of the world, from the best Christmas pageant ever. All children, except one, grow up, from Peter Pan. Baroom, 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 barippity, 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 good from Bridge to Terabithia. So you can see from those examples there that there are onomatopoeia, interesting facts, vivid descriptions, questions, and dialogues used for those openings. A great thing to do with your students is to ask them to write the first line of a book that they've read. And to put them all together, you can put them on a padlet, you can collect them on a poster in the classroom, and then they rate them. Which one of those first lines would make them want to read the book? I did that with one of my classes recently, and some of the winners, they were ranked on a scale of one to four stars, and two books won four stars. The Children of the King by Sonia Hartnett. She heard it. Footsteps in the dark. Most of the people in that class, or at least half, voted for that book and gave it four stars because that opening grabbed them. Another one was The Bold by Julian Cleary. Telling lies is never a good idea. Two books in that class got three and a half stars. Dragon's Eyes by Scarlett Thomas. Mrs. Beethog Hyde was exactly the kind of teacher who gave children nightmares. And The Land of Stories by Chris Colfier. The dungeon was a miserable place. Light was scarce and flickered from the torches bolted to the stone walls. So you can see that's a great activity. Everybody shares the first lines of books they're reading. The class votes on which book they would read based on those first lines. And then you can see what's popular in your classroom. Good endings are also important. I'm just going to touch on those a little bit. You can see some examples here. Narrative endings, circular endings, surprise endings, lesson or moral endings, warm, fuzzy endings, endings that make you reflect, 
endings that end in a cliffhanger, endings that end in a question or with humor, something that paints a picture again or creates dialogue. You can see from this next example, here are some texts that have those endings and you can take a look at these books for the different examples. These things come from a wonderful resource called Young Teacher Love by Christina Nanini, and you can check that out as well. So when you're writing, think about how your beginning can capture the attention of the reader and how your ending can either leave the reader wanting more or can wrap things up nicely. That's it for today. See you next time.